Thank you. Mr. Shunoi. Mr. Rajan. Yodi. Aditya Rai Chaudhary. Mr. Bagai from UNEP. Members of FIKI, members from the industry. Thank you very much for having me over this morning. And more than that, thank you very much for having a discussion on sustainability in the industry. Because in today's context, if there is one thing that the industry not just needs to seriously think about, but act upon, is a sustainable development issue. And uh, we must understand this perhaps in the background of what we are going through. You know, the transition from MDGs to SDGs is something that everybody is keenly looking at. Many say that this transition is actually an unfinished agenda which has got transferred into SDGs from MDG. But if you carefully look at the SDGs the way has, it has been put across, it's much more than only an unfinished agenda. It redefines responsibilities, it redefines commitments. And it actually encompasses every aspect of what we do. All the goals and targets are so designed that if you read it carefully, there's just about everything that you need to do. So that's the wholesomeness of SDGs which we are faced with when we talk about sustainability. And uh, when you talk about sustainability, the development that has to come through has to have means and ways which, as you just mentioned, and the Prime Min Honorable Prime Minister mentioned the other day, has to coexist with nature. I mean, as Secretary of Environment, the primary responsibility is to protect the environment. But protecting the environment in itself inherently places a lot of responsibility on everyone and not just the ministry or the government. And we've always been mentioning this, that environment-friendly activities are a part of the Indian culture. I mean, if you look around the rest of the country, even people who do not understand sustainability and environment friendliness are actually responding to that in their own little way. And if you aggregate all that, then you realize how Indians react to it. So it's inherently within us. And this whole thing needs to be seen in the context of climate change. There are two issues that I'd like to place here. First and foremost, this entire idea, whether it is the industry or anyone else, the idea must drive home that climate change is for real. That threat is there more than anything else. And it is time we prepared for the threat because when the threat comes, perhaps one of the biggest hit will be taken by the industry and the business. So we need to prepare ourselves. We need to put ourselves in a position where we can actually try and see what is the minimal damage and risk that we have to ourselves and mitigate that risk to the extent that we can. You know, having seen that the climate change is real and I don't see it happening in, even in the global context, not just an Indian phenomenon, it's global. Globally, we are talking about reducing temperatures by 2%. To be very honest, the way we are moving, if we do even 1% plus, it will be a, some kind of achievement. Hopefully, there will be better things happening in the near future. But as a country, we have very, very strong commitments which we have made in terms of the NDCs that we have spelt out to the world. And those commitments are to be kept not just by government, but also by every individual of this country because they are national commitments made to the globe. And industry has a very, very vital role to play in those commitments. And, uh, you know, we have commitments of reducing emission. We have commitments of increasing carbon sink. All that has to go hand in hand with greater what they call green responsibility lying on everyone. And the problem is that if you look at India and the development story, the development imperatives of India are far stronger 
than many, many countries in the world today. And as a government, as a community, as a nation, we are committed to achieving those development goals. We need infrastructure. We need industries. We need manufacturing. We need production. We certainly need to reach out to people in the rural areas with electricity. But all this will have to happen in what is termed as sustainable development. I'll give you one example. Let's look at the energy sector, for example. We keep talking about 300 million people in India still not having the benefit of electricity. Today, as a country, we are committed to producing 175 gigawatt of renewable energy by 2022, out of which close to 100 gigawatt is to come from solar energy. If 100 gigawatt is to come from solar energy, the industry must rise to the occasion and prove the point that we are part of this national commitment which we will make. Incidentally, this entire story of climate change mitigation adaptation adds and provides a huge opportunity of newer fields, better fields for the industry as well. And we need to seize this opportunity and take it upon ourselves to take the country forward. So whether it is you know, in um, uh, energy or building or industrial emission, we will have to move towards sustainable development. And the point that I'm trying to make here is, unfortunately, as a community, as an industry, we have no options. There are no second or third thoughts. There is only one line which we can take. And the government would be very happy to be a part of this new story that we are trying to write. But the original thinking will have to come from the industry. There are many global practices, and we keep talking about global best practices and say that Canada did this, or for example, Brazil did this, and we should do it. We are a unique country, and we have to find unique solutions for ourselves. Those learnings are extremely good in terms of giving us broad directions. But when it comes to actual implementable facts, India will have to create its own path. And that is going to come from the business and industry. Because you must have to be in a position where you can innovate in order to create this new path that we are looking for. The government certainly would be standing behind you on every turn to handhold and see how we can facilitate that. So the role of industry is not just in reducing emission. That's, that's a primary thing that we need to do. But we are also looking at technologies and innovations where one does not have to keep bothering about how we keep reducing our emissions. We need to have greener technologies working in this country, and greener technologies are there. But let me at this point of time also say, since UN representatives are here, that whenever you go for a UN meeting, you say that India must do it if the world has to do it. India will do it. But let me tell you, we are still among the lowest emitters in this world. We as a country have made this commitment that we will try and write off some of the mistakes that have happened by other countries also in the past. So India has taken on greater responsibility than what we thought we should. But having said that, our development needs are huge, and therefore the vehicle has to move very fast. So there will be a lot more industrialization happening. There will be a lot more infrastructure happening, a lot more in energy happening. That is why the country needs to be extremely cautious that we do not disturb the environment when we move on this path of development. Uh, I'll give you one example. Thermal comfort. That's one critical thing that we are looking at. And that I'm giving this example particularly because I want to make a point that if the industry so decides in India, it can be the global leader. Today, let's say in thermal comfort, let's talk about air conditioning. The total penetration in India is about 4%. So naturally, this is going to go, go up. And as government, as uh, industry, 
it's our commitment to provide th thermal comfort to everyone in India. So this is going to go up. But when it came to shifting from one kind of emitting gas to another, from CFC to HFC and to HCFC, we took the lead globally. So that is the kind of commitment the Indian industry has and Indian industry no needs to show in other aspects as well. There are many concerns in the industry which I must flag this morning on various notifications that the government does, whether it is with the municipal solid waste, e-waste or plastics. We do appreciate the problems of transition in all this that the industry has to face. But we must together understand what I mentioned earlier, that there are no shortcuts and there are no options. The sooner we adopt, the sooner we adapt, and the sooner we get used to newer technology, the better it is going to be for all of us. Two critical elements which the government would try and solve for you is technology and resource, both at a country level as well as at a global level. So if we can bring these things together and create an atmosphere where we are looking only at newer technologies which do not impact the environment, we will be doing a huge, huge service to the nation. And, you know, issues like global reporting initiative, I think the industry should come forward and adapt it more and more because that's about transparency. That is how you send a message globally that the Indian industry is willing to take a lead and is in a position at a launching pad where it can take a lead. And as a, such a large country, there is no reason why we should not take the leadership role. And that is what I urge the industry to join us for. And, and uh, the corporate sector in India has been doing its job extremely well. But we are also conscious of the fact, and the corporate sector is particularly conscious of the fact, that what we've been able to contribute is just a little bit and we need to do much, much more. The path is well defined, whether it is CSR, whether it is I mean, extended producer's responsibility, I'm sure the industry will stand up and do its bit. It's a critical issue. And this critical issue will be resolved not by anyone else but by us only. And sustainability has to be the focus of anything that we do in our daily activities. And as long as we are able to stick to that and have a well-charted out program to achieve that, there is no reason why we will not succeed. I mean, power sector, for example. Power sector is reforming every day. They are trying to come up with cleaner and cleaner technologies. But then we do have a burden of... Uh, equipments and machines and things which are 20 years old, 30 years old, we need to do that. So what I am advocating today and what I am requesting everybody to consider today is change. As long as we can bring about change and push a new agenda, we will all be together in doing this. And one request I would make at the end to Fiki and everybody in the industry here, this is the time to come forward and do far more for greening India than you have done before. I am not even talking about big things that we need to do. Good greening local initiative will put us far ahead of anyone else. And I think that is completely doable. And time that organizations like FIKI put all their members together to see how they do it particularly since we are talking in Delhi. Let us do something about Delhi. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for...